Okay, so thank you everyone for attending this talk. Today we are going to talk about notebooks, one of the main tools of the data scientists. And we are going to show you how in our team we make them shareable and reproducible. First, some word on us. I'm Pascal, I'm data scientist at CyberAngel, and I'm focusing on building robust and efficient machine learning models to identify all kinds of digital threats. Hi, I'm Mike, machine learning engineer at CyberAngel. I am focusing on leading the development of machine learning products from idea to production. We also have Julia. She contributed a lot to the work presented today, but unfortunately couldn't attend the, the presentation. So first, let me ask you a question. According to you, which kind of uh, candies is better for sharing among, let's say, three people? Left or right? Anyone? Let's say that on, le on the left picture, you would have uh, just one flavor, but uh, more candies, and on the right, you would have less candies, but more flavors. Anyone, left or right? For me, I like uh, the right one, because okay. I, I have tagada, croco, everything. Yeah. Me, I would say left. I love, uh, I love the red ones. Okay, you may, you may wondering what the hell is he talking about? Actually, we are going to show you how we switched from left to right in the context of scaling up across a data science team. Just keep in mind that uh, the candies can be seen as notebooks, the candy pack can be seen as a data science project, and that the packaging itself can be seen as a virtual machine the project are hosted on. Here, here is our today agenda. We'll have first some context about our company, our team, and how they evolved. We will drive you through our notebook journey, followed by a, a quick demo of our final solution. Then we will have some key takeaways, and if you have any questions, please uh, keep them for the, the Q&A session. Okay, so first, some context. What kind of company are we working in? What kind of evolution did we face? And what these uh, evolutions uh, brought like uh, as challenges? Cyber Angel is a cyber security scale-up whose job is to protect companies from external cyber threats. So basically, we scan every layer of the internet in order to find sensitive data leaks belonging to our client. And the solution can be seen as four main blocks. The first one is comprehensive scanning which is about detecting potential data belonging to our clients. And here we detect a billion of samples. So we need the second block, the machine learning block, in order to filter this noise and to only send to our analysts sensi potential sensitive data. The job of our analysts is to identify the real, pot uh, the real sensitive data in order to alert our clients via a SaaS interface. Here is uh, an example of um, sensitive data we can find on the internet. So here, for example, we have the blueprint of a data center, which was on an open server. And you can see that on the blueprint, you have the CCTV camera location. So there are obviously big risk for the company, such as physical security of the site, but also uh, customer data leaks if anyone entered the, the site. With several fundraising events, the company has uh, lately switched from a startup to scale-up with new challenges. And with more clients in the pipe, we also need to have more robust and efficient machine learning models. In this context, the data team has also evolved there has, over the years, there have, there have been departures and arrivals. We have been more senior members. And over the last year, there have been the creation of three official sub-data teams and the arrival of machine learning engineers like Mike in the data science team. And all these contexts brought new challenges that, may, that can be mainly seen as two axes. The first axis is quality and robustness. More teamwork, but also more clients in our pipe 
implies more a needs or a need for more quality and more robustness. And here we try to answer how to better support growth. The second axis is traceability and reproducibility. Here we want to be able to better trace back decision between exploration and production. And we want, for example, for a new member of the team to easily retrain an existing machine learning model. So here we want to better support the transfer knowledge. So in this context, in our data science team, each of us contributes to project using notebooks before code industrialization. Let's see what kind of issue we faced and how we overcome them. That's our notebook journey. So at Cyber Angel, we use a Jupyter notebook. Jupyter is an open source server client application that allows editing and running notebook documents via a web browser. So notebooks are must have for data exploration, for model development. As you can see on the right picture, they are structured under sales format, so you can easily load and explore your data, you can visual visualize them in plots, you can interact with those plots and perform <coughs> analysis under markdown format. So notebooks are great for storytelling that allow flexible experimentation. And if I show you an example here, you would see that um, a lot of valuable work and, uh, and interesting uh, things can be done in notebook, as I said, which are structured in a self-format. But if I show you the, the plain text version of these notebooks, you would see that the, this format is, oddly, is tricky to share, oddly reproducible, and simply not built for, for production purpose. Because here, you have a, a JSON format with outputs of the images, for example, and it's simply not built for, for versioning, for example, like you can have with, with scripts. Indeed, if you look at a, a common machine learning workflow, you can see it as two main parts. The first part is the exploration and experimentation. It's basically the, the training with uh, exploratory data analysis, feature engineering, model evaluation. And here, you mainly deal with notebooks. You can experiment, you can prototype, and sometimes it's dirty. While on the, the second part of this workflow, you have the production part. You only deal with scripts, and you have, you have to have something clear and reproducible. And our main challenge is to facilitate the transition between notebooks and scripts in order to avoid less late transfer of code from notebooks to, notebooks to scripts, and in order to avoid less double work between training and production. And focusing on notebooks versioning can help a lot. Let's see how we started and where we arrived. So remember the first picture I saw you? Back to 2019, we, we were rather in this kind of sharing. We had one data scientist per project, working on uh, virtual machines we were hosted on, uh, on a server. So based on the picture, you had one data scientist working on just one candy pack, so one flavor. And most of the code was sometimes in remote on those virtual machines, sometimes in local on our personal laptop. But in the end, there were no common guidelines. It means that apart from the models and the data sets, the notebooks and scripts were often left aside, either on those virtual machines or worst, on our personal laptop, so there was no traceability. There are obviously some reasons we started like that. First, at this time, uh, managed notebooks were not widespread, so if you are not familiar with managed notebooks, that actually just a notebook solution hosted on a managed virtual machine on cloud solution. And also, at this time, we needed a lot of computational power to train our models. So this solution was, uh, what was quite effective for that. And finally, it was a startup choice because we wanted to go fast, and even more, we wanted to fail fast. However, even if we had computational power and we could go fast, there were obviously some drawbacks. 
First, maintenance were, was not easy because we, have, we had to upgrade and update those, uh, those machines by ourselves. And uh, you should need some skill to do it. Plus, there was a lack of flexibility because with those machines, we had fixed resources. And most of the time, we, need, we needed less. Sometimes we needed more, but in the end, we, we, paid, too, we paid too much for that. Furthermore, we had a lack of quality and robustness because uh, with such a, a solution, we, it was very hard to work at several and the same projects. And finally, there was a lack of trustability and reproducibility because, as I said, in the end, apart from models and data sets, not so much when stored on a specific place, and especially not notebooks. And entering the scale-up phase of the company and the data team led to a paradigm shift. We wanted to go far instead of going fast. And as the proverb says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. That's why, starting 2020, we decided to be at least two data scientists on the same project. project. This, um, this implies to focus on quality and robustness, and it alighted our needs of better sharing and trustability. That's why we're starting to work with managed notebook, and uh, Mike is going to tell you more about it. Thanks, Pascal. Yes, in 2020, we started to use uh, to migrate to. Uh, GCP and uh, decide to use managed solution like AI Notebooks. AI Mod Notebooks is a platform that allows you to use Jupyter Notebook in the cloud with the specification of the machine you need. So in this figure, you, ca you have uh, one example of AI Notebooks. You can see there are several notebooks that have been already created and you have the machine type, which, which is the configuration of your virtual machine. You also have environment, which is uh, machine learning packages. And you have another option, which is uh, GPU. Uh, you can choose if you want to use GPU or not in your, in your virtual machine. So using uh, GCP AI notebooks, each team member can easily spawn new instances based on the project requirement. Compared to the initial solution, we have several advantages. The first one, it's less cost. Today, we use virtual machine. We, are, we have possibility to turn off or delete this virtual machine at the, end of, at the end of the project. We can also store all the notebooks in GitHub repository and data in the cloud storage, for example. We also have flexibility enhancement. Today, we have, we use virtual machine. Uh, we no need to install uh, a, a lot of packages. Also, we can we have possibility to update our our virtual machine, for example, to increase the memory size or also the the CPU. Again, we have better sharing. Today, we use manage um, the this notebook, and each team member can easy can have can have easy access to the to the data and also to the notebooks. Finally, we have managed solution environment and machine type already exist. Also, we, we don't need to maintain the virtual machine and it's a managed solution. Everything is done auto automatically. This is one example of, uh, AI, uh, of, AI not, um, of the one project on AI Notebooks. You can see we have our project and then in the uh, notebooks, notebook folder, we have several folders and <laughs> In uh, one folder, you can have yes, this this files. You can see you have a lot of notebooks, and it's al also CSV file, also pickle. But you can also notice that we have a lot of manual versioning for one file. You have v1, v2, etc., etc. Uh, this is uh, because we we are multiple user users on the on the virtual machine and also working at the same time. Everything works like he, he wants. And uh, we have a lot of manual versioning, also the repeated cut. So it's very tricky to work at that. Uh, so by switching uh, to the cloud, 
we solve a lot of problems, but we also realized that there was still a lot of room for improvement. So I'm going to show you some limitation we have for we have. The first limitation we have, uh, it's a uh, user management. So it's impossible to know the latest version piece of code. Also, uh, in uh, AI notebooks, uh, you cannot use different credentials to log in. So, um, yes, it's, uh, anyone on the GCP project can log into virtual machine with as default user. So then it's very difficult or impossible to know who made modifications on FI. The second limitation is traceability and reproducibility. So today, as Pascal said, we have two parts. Uh, today we just version the code that is in production, but we don't version the code in the, the first part, exploration and experimentation. Um, because we, we use only script in the second part, but we also use, uh, many, we use many notebooks in the first part and also some, uh, Script, but why, uh, not uh, versioning notebooks is uh, very complicated because we use in our team we use uh, Git to to version, and uh, Git is not designed to work on uh, to work on notebooks because notebook is a JSON document, and uh, this is a problem. I'm going to show you one example of how of a Git diff between uh, two uh, on. Uh, Notebook file, you can see this is uh, different between two versions of a notebook. Yeah, you can see it's very, <laughs> yeah, it's humanly impossible to read. You cannot, you don't, you cannot know what modification is. And, uh, the third and last mi uh, limitation is the double work. Today, how we work, how we work, we have two parts and we have notebooks, write some function and then in production, we are just going to copy the code and then pass them into production. Yes, it's uh, not very uh, good. We have this. Why, this uh, this is why we have a lot of duplicated code. Uh, I show you the three drawbacks we have today. But as a data scientists, we also have some constraints. It's to use notebook and also script. We need to use notebook in. Uh, for data exploration and also to do some visualization, but we also need the script uh, into production because we want to have a portable and scalable pipelines. Uh, so, I, and then, uh, so now we have the three drawbacks, which are uh, user management, traceability and reproducibility, and double work plus this additional constraint. So. As solution to, to these uh, drawbacks, we propro we set up several tools. The first tool we set up is Jupyter Hub. We set up Jupyter Hub to solve the user management limitation. What is Jupyter Hub? Jupyter Hub is the way to enable simultaneous use of Jupyter notebooks by multiple users. So compared to the classic AI notebooks, with Jupyter Hub you have possibility each user has his own session. How it's worked today in our team? In, in our team, we set up Jupyter app on the virtual machine, and we have also some default kernels. And when someone wants to work, he's going to use his uh, GitLab uh, credential, connect to Jupyter app, and enter in his session. And also, you have, you can work um, with uh, these, these kernels, uh, you can also have possibility to create your custom kernel. You, you do what you want in your session. To solve uh, reproducibility and traceability, we use Jupytext. Jupytext is a, it's a Jupyter plugin that can save Jupyter notebooks in various text formats. So, uh, like, uh, you, you can have Markdown file, also programming language like Python, or R. So in our team, you, we use uh, Python. How it's work, Jupytex? Jupytex is going to pair the notebook, your notebook with uh, PY file. And then every modification you are going to do in your notebook is going to update the PY file, automatically update the PY file. But the, uh, the things that Jupytex just 
update the notebook cells information in your py file, not the output. So finally, we set up Jupyter app to solve user management limitation, Jupyter to solve reproducibility and traceability. And when we combine these tools, we solve the double work. So now how we work um, compared to the inside solution where we have several, uh, where we have one machine per project. Today we just have, we, we have one machine each user has his own session, and in your session, you, have, you can have one or several project. This we don't have, three pocket, uh, several pocket. Now we have one pocket with several projects. Now I'm going to show, show you a quick demo on how we work. So, okay. Yeah. This is a, uh, okay. This is a connection page, uh, Jupyter, Jupyter app. Know that you have a link, you can, we, we set up, we can connect. You use uh, one URL, you can connect, and you are going to authenticate with uh, your GitHub credential or Google. And then enter a new session. Yeah. Now we are going to clone a new project, for example, existing project. We are going to clone a new project, demo uh, Jupyter app. Okay. And now we show you the structure of our project. In our team, we use custom uh, cookie cutter. You can see we have the structure. You have data, model, notebooks, notebook script, and uh, yeah. Yes, uh, here, uh, uh, I will show you the content of, uh, yes, dot git in your. You can see we have notebooks in our git in your because we don't want to version the notebook, the IPNB file. And here we have notebook script with a uh, py file. I'm going to explain you uh, why. Yeah, you have unit test, integration test, and you can you also have some configuration files, py project point terminal, poetry point log. And now you can see the yes, the py project point terminal. You can you have uh, some information on your project. And also you have packages, some dependencies. But this is the Jupyter configuration. You have Jupyter configuration. Here you can see it. You have notebooks folder and also notebook script, script folder. Uh, this configuration means that every um, every file IPNB you are going to create in your notebooks um, will have an equivalent in the notebook script folder. Yes. Now, yes, we use Prezi to uh, for virtual env. Yes. Now, because we use Prezi, we can install some packages in our virtual env. And uh, no, yes. Now, here you have the py file, and you can see we the notebooks folder is empty. I'm going to show you the content of the of this file. Uh, you can see that we have the from the metadata. It's a JupyterX metadata. This is a yes. And now you are going to generate the IPNV. The the IPNV. You just uh, open uh, the your py file with uh, like. Notebook. Yes. And when you do this action, it's going to generate the, 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 the IPNB. So also, uh, we already installed the, the, the custom kernel. 
you have possibility to install the custom kernel with uh, poetry. So we don't, you can install a lot of uh, kernel that you can see here. We use the kernel for this project, for this project. And also you can, you will see we cr it's automatically create the IPNB file. And then you can open your notebook now and use the, uh, the custom kernel and execute the cells. You can see the output too. Yes, here we use uh, the public uh, dataset. You can see you have the, uh, you have the, the code in the cell and also the output in your notebook. You can see here we just execute the, the, the code. We didn't add anything. And now we, yes, I'm going to see if I, I, yeah, I use this statue to, to, to look if I made a modification. Yes, any mod, any, no modification. Now update, and now I'm going to add a piece of code, new piece of code, new cell, and add this uh, the, this code. You can see it's execute. You have the output, and then also go back here yeah, to the, our py. You can see in our py, it's automatically update our py. And now I'm, we are going to use the same command, git status. And you can see that, yes, the quick analysis py, it's updated. And now we are going to show you the difference between two versions. With git diff, you can see that we have add this piece of code. And now we, we are going to show you the content of uh, IPNB uh, file. We remove the notebook from Notebook folder from uh, this uh, from Gitinia. Git statues. Yeah, just to show you the content of this file, you can see Git uh, IPNB. It's very tricky. It's uh, impossible for you want to read this file, and uh, that's it. Yes, that's okay, so let's go to the, the key takeaways of this talk. The main key takeaways is that no, uh, notebook versioning is possible. It will probably, the main solution actually is we used is the JupyText and you can combine with uh, Jupyter Hub if you work with other teammates. And first, it will probably allow your company to deploy projects faster in production. Secondly, it will ease your workflow as a data scientist or as a machine learning engineer. You will have a, a structured workflow with a reproducible and shareable notebooks. And in the end, you will have more quality, more robustness, more trustability, and so better teamwork. So thank you, everyone. If you have any questions, please feel free. Thank you. Questions? Yeah, sure. Hello, uh, thank you for the talk, first of all. Um, uh, you mentioned that uh, Jupyter Notebooks were not uh, suitable for production, but then uh, in, in your uh, architecture is running the Jupyter Notebooks in production. That's uh, because of uh, Jupyter Hub or, or is a different trick? I don't know if the question is clear. You mean that why you, we can't uh, run Jupyter Notebooks in production? No, if it is suitable or not, the format of or the idea of the Jupyter Notebooks for, for carry on uh, actual task in, produ in production. Do you want to? I think I don't understand very well. Can you repeat, please? Maybe yeah, just. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. If uh, you, do you consider that a Jupyter notebook is a right uh, 
process batch or uh, a write the binary, let's say, a write the script for carry on uh, tasks, real tasks in production. No, we don't consider that. Actually, we, we wanted to version notebook because we want to ease our workflow in the, in the experimentation part. But in the end, we write scripts. The feature engineering and stuff is done in, in script, in, uh, in package, in uh, microservices. And uh, no, we don't use notebook and we don't consider that. No. Yes. OK, that, so it's yeah. like uh, for exploratory phase. And then there, there should be a, a translation to uh, yeah. another uh, format. So. Yes, and actually, our solution does not allow to to have notebooks in production in the production part, but just to ease the process of uh, experimentation and experimentation Thank with you. this version. Thank you. Any more questions? Yes. Well, first of all, thank you. Uh, I think we deal with a lot of the same issues. Um, and uh, I was wondering, how do you deal with testability of your code? Um, so, for example, in your exploration phase, do you already write tests for, for your functions, or is that something you only do when you transition to uh, production code? Do you want to take it? Or? Yeah. Yes, we, uh, we, we have a unit test for some function. Yes, because we have a not built or uh, we, we, we can work with notebook also with script. When we have uh, the same function, we, we are going to create just one uh, piece of code in new, uh, new, uh, new file, new file. And then when we are, yes, we use, uh, we want to version, we test before, uh, before, before production, yes. And, and furthermore, when we do feature engineering, we try to use, uh, to create classes that can be, uh, script into, into py file and to avoid like apply, pandas dot apply in order to have something clean and then can be tested directly. Uh, we got that directly in the notebook to transport that in, uh, in the production step more, more easily in order to uh, avoid to lose, lose time, uh, after. Yeah. Thank you. I think we'll have to try that out. <laughs> Um, so yeah, first of all, thank you. Um, Jupyter Hub looks really interesting for us as well. Um, I have one question regarding JupyText. So um, did you try some other kinds of tools to remove um, the parts of Jupyter Notebooks that were not great for looking at diffs? Because um, I find that usually it's mostly just outputs and graphs um, that make it hard to look at differences. So um, we usually do clean the notebooks, like just remove all the output and all the kernel meta information, like all the timing information and stuff like that. And then it's kind of okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, so the question was yeah. really, do you have any other problems uh, with Jupy text or does it solve everything for you now? For, for now, I would say that it's okay. Yes, it's okay, but <laughs> it, maybe it's not a good solution. But for now, uh, we it's uh, we are able to version the, 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 the this notebook because JupyTeX uh, it's a bi bidirectional, which means that you can generate like you generate the the, the py from your IPNB. You can also create the IPNB from your py file. Yeah. So this is why it's a. Uh, for us, for, for now, it's good, but we don't know. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, because I'm not sure you can do that with other solutions, like uh, just cleaning the outputs. It's not bidirectional, so maybe it's, uh, it's an advantage that uh, Jupyter has. Um, yeah, if you're just cleaning the outputs, you still have the notebook file, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, of course. Yes. But I mean, if you... If you do a modification in your IPTAN notebook and uh, in your script, for example, you won't have it in your IPTAN notebook and etc. So maybe that's the advantage. I'll definitely try out your solution. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, maybe a quick question regarding your infrastructure. So Jupyter Hub, is that compatible with AI notebooks or did you switch to like a self-hosted solution now? 
It's a virtual machine, actually, Jupyter Hub. Yes, yes. Uh, Jupyter Hub is just uh, you just uh, install Jupyter Hub in the in a virtual machine, and then you already already have a notebook because it's a it's a package. Yes. Oh, it's, right. a, it's a package. So okay, so you're still using AI notebooks in the background. Yeah. No, it's Sorry? not an AI, uh, um, uh, an AI notebook solution. You can, I think, you can do it with uh, AWS on a specific yes, machine. Yes. You can okay. install yes. it, and then we have a, a DNS, and we go there, yes. and it's very easy because you you connect in just one click. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we seem to have a lot of pains with notebooks. Um, and how is it with scalability now with Jupyter Hub? Now it's you have a fixed machine, right? Basically. Yes. yes. Mm. And we can do modification. Yeah, but it. you can do modification of the of your machine. You can decide to increase the memory size and also mm -hmm. CPU. It's like you want. Mm -hmm. You can okay. decide yeah. to turn off every night, so you have more more flexibility with your yeah. resources. For example, you can also increase the the, the, the size of uh, the disk. Yes, you mm -hmm. can do everything you want because you can update the the machine type. And a problem we had with the, our old virtual machines, but that it were that uh, if anyone uh, uh, use all the resources, <laughs> you you <laughs> just uh, can do anything. And with the the solution uh, we implemented, you can also. Uh, Fix the resources. I yeah. think you can maybe do it with a, 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 another virtual machine, but uh, that was more easy, easier. Cool. Thanks. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay. Thank you very much, gentlemen. That was fun. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we make a.